So, what do you see here, uh, other than maybe like a dirty car? I gotta get it washed. Well, here's your exhaust right here. What's coming out of there right now? Well, because underneath in the exhaust system, we've got a catalytic converter attached to this vehicle. It's taking the carbon monoxide that's being produced, a very deadly gas, and it's turning it into carbon dioxide. Sure, that's a greenhouse gas, but it's a heck of a lot better than the alternative, which is CO. It's poisonous. CO will kill you. It's got 130 times more affinity to your hemoglobin than does oxygen. So when it gets on there, it don't let go. And that's how people suffocate when they have carbon monoxide poisoning. It's nasty. Now, what else is coming out of there? N2 gas. That's actually pretty good because the catalytic converter is taking NO2 that's being made in my hot burning car engine and it's converting it back into a harmless gas. That NO2, that can be pretty nasty if it gets into the environment because it gets up there and causes acid rain by combining with water to make nitric and nitrous acid. Same idea here, but in the end, the arrows are a little different. Watch this one. Sodium ascorbate, which actually is the formula Na2C6H6O6, that's ascorbate right there with sodium, is reacting with that potassium bicarbonate, the KHCO3. If you dissociate everything in solution like you're supposed to, sodium ions, ascorbate ion, potassium ions, bicarbonate ions, and water, there's your list of chemicals to find the strongest acid, strongest base. Which of these is highest up on the left-hand side as an acid? Well, it would actually be this one right here, the bicarbonate ion, this time acting as an acid instead of a base. Ascorbate is actually a very strong, weak base. <laughs> so it's really far down on the right-hand side of a chart, very close to hydroxide ion, and so therefore, we say it's the strongest base, not a strong base, but the strongest one in this reaction. Not the strongest acid, but this, a strong acid, but the strongest one here. Okay, now we react the two together. So you're right, HCO3 negative plus C6H6O6, two negative, that ion there. What's it going to do? It's going to form, we're going to transfer a proton from the acid to the base, and we're going to get C6, now this is the way this one's written. You can put the H in front if you want to. But it's actually written, written C6H7O61 negative when it accepts one proton. Uh, plus, what's left over here? CO32 negative. That's aqueous, that's aqueous, that's aqueous. And so is this. But here's the thing about this reaction. What's the arrow? This is an acid that's saying, well, I don't really want to give up a proton. I'm a weak acid. I don't like to give up protons very much. And this base is saying, well, I am a strong base. You know, I'll take a proton. I'm not going to really take it, but I'll, but I'll take it. No, nah, I don't really want to give it up. You can see that this is not a 100% reaction. What it's going to be is a reaction where we have equilibrium arrows, but because it's still an acid over a base in terms of position on a chart, we like to put an arrow on top that says, yeah, it's in equilibrium, but the products are favored in terms of their amount. So if it was weak base over weak acid, if that's the situation that you had, then the top arrow would point towards the reactants. You'd have a very weak reaction there. Here's the sodium bicarbonate. Here's the acetic acid. Hey, isn't that nice? That's the H2CO3 forming and spontaneously decomposing into CO2 and H2O.